RuneScape. Depending on who you are, this game carries with it a lot of weight. For some, it was many people's first MMORPG, as it's free to play and could be enjoyed in a web browser on just about any computer. For others, it's an experience they still enjoy to this day, logging in to slowly chip away at getting stronger gear and increasing their character skills. But for many people living in Venezuela, RuneScape is literally helping them survive. If that third sentence seems like it went from 0 to 60, you're not alone. This has been a discussion in the RuneScape community for the last couple years, but recently Polygon put up a wonderful article explaining why so many Venezuelans are turning to a nearly 20-year-old game to help them escape from their country, which has 90% of its citizens living below the poverty level. Not to go too much into it here, but if you're not aware, Venezuela is not in the best condition at the moment. Between the food shortages, failing infrastructure, and raids conducted on those believed to harbor anti-government sentiment, not many Venezuelans want to stick around. Last year, the total number of refugees who have left the country reached 4 million. But for those still living there, they are struggling to survive. Due to hyperinflation, minimum wage jobs earn people there the equivalent of 5 US dollars a month. It's gotten so bad that criminals don't even steal money anymore. So people had to start figuring out other ways to get food on their tables. And unlikely as it sounds, they turned to RuneScape. And here, I'd like to start going over individual stories from some Venezuelans. One man, who chose to only go by Martinez, used to be an accountant, but due to the country's crumbling economy, his wages dropped so low that he couldn't feed himself. Quote, Over time, my salary became less than $4 a month, and I just couldn't do anything with it, so I decided to try a game my neighbor was telling me to play for money. And amazingly, he was able to use RuneScape to raise $450 to escape Venezuela and make it to Peru, after which he continued to play the game and saved an additional $1,000 to get his mother and girlfriend out as well. According to Martinez, RuneScape has become a pretty popular way to earn extra money in Venezuela. Quote, depending on which state in Venezuela you're from, pretty much everyone knows about the game. And as it stands, Venezuela is actually the 8th highest country making up RuneScape's player base. So. How are Martinez and so many other Venezuelans using this old game to make so much money? Well, they spend time gathering resources in-game, most commonly gold, the in-game currency, and then organize a trade with another player for real-world money, usually in US dollars. Since the Venezuelan currency, the Bolivar, is constantly in flux, and according to a recent study during October last year, it was estimated that 54% of transactions in Venezuela were made in US dollars, despite it not being the national currency. Martinez says without RuneScape, quote, my family would have starved. And it's not like Martinez is alone. According to him, quote, I personally know a lot of people that left the country thanks to old school RuneScape and still know people trying to do it. I would say that almost all the youth that have had the chance to leave the country have now done so, probably either through old school RuneScape or other means. And many family members that are still living in Venezuela can only get by from their expat relatives sending them money. Another Venezuelan, who refused to give his real name since he's still living in the country and is afraid of saying anything that might get him targeted by the state, says that he started trying to help his family earn more money by going to R Slave Labor, a subreddit for outsourcing work to people in poorer countries for pay often below minimum wages in first world countries. From here, he discovered a thread where someone was looking for people to play RuneScape for over 6 hours a day smelting bars of Runite, a metal in the game. The going rate was nearly 75 cents an hour, which netted him $150 a month. Nowadays, he works at least 8 hours a day, and somewhere between 5 to 7 days a week, making between $200 to $300 a month. The interesting part about the work that these individuals have turned to in order to make ends meet is that it's actually a bannable offense in the eyes of the company behind RuneScape, Jagex. In fact, it's an issue the studio has been trying to fix for a long time. If an account is suspected of breaking the rules, they will be banned from playing. But this is a risk that many Venezuelans are willing to make. And this illegal gold trading is wildly popular. In 2013 alone, Jagex's CEO, Mark Garrard, said that 40-50% to 50 of the game's active player base was buying gold from these gold farmers. Let me explain how this gold farming is done. To be honest, there are a lot of different ways. You can buy and sell monkey nuts, lol. You can acquire a bunch of cheaper items, and if your character has enough skill, you can craft them into a much more expensive item and then sell that off for a profit. But what seems to be one of the most popular ways is to go into an area of the game and fight monsters to collect rare items to sell. One area for this is a place called Revenant Caves, known simply to players as Rev Caves. This area features a few more difficult enemies that drop some rarer items when killed, which can be sold for large amounts of money. 
The interesting thing about this area is that you can also be killed by other players while you're here, so it's a bit of a high-risk, high-reward situation. And this has been exploited in multiple ways, but I'll get to that in a minute. The players who have farmed this gold are often in touch with a larger, third-party organization, who finds players looking to buy gold and matches them up with someone else in the game. Funnily enough, you can't just make a new account and trade large sums of gold, as Jagex has enacted multiple rules over the years to try and curb this. This has led to some gold traders getting inventive, including a method where players will meet up with someone and purposely get killed while holding large sums of gold as a way of trading it undetected. And as of writing this, 1 million gold is currently being sold for 56 cents in US dollars. If you don't play MMOs, this might be hard to understand, but the in-game economy of RuneScape is very similar to ones in the real world. It functions on a lot of the same rules, including supply and demand. And a growing number of people farming gold and trading rare items has affected the prices of in-game objects. And Venezuelan players have such an impact on the game's economy that in March last year, when the country's electricity network collapsed, a lot less players weren't able to do as much farming, and it caused a huge spike in the prices of more popular items. Just look at this chart. The red line represents when the blackouts started in Venezuela. Notice how the prices of items in RuneScape skyrocketed shortly after. It should be noted, this was a brutal moment for the Venezuelan players as well. Martinez, the man mentioned earlier, said that he was in the middle of combat trying to earn gold, when all of a sudden his internet disconnected, which caused him to die and lose all the gold he had accrued to sell. Quote, When the first wave of blackouts started, me and the guys that worked with me lost almost all of our business. It's important to mention that there's a bit of a backlash against the Venezuelan gold farmers in the RuneScape community. Some of them think the gold farmers are ruining the game, since much of the experience in RuneScape is having to do the same boring task a million times over yourself. So paying someone else to essentially do this for you goes against the whole point of playing RuneScape to them. This has manifested itself in some bad ways. On the game subreddit, one post which was actually removed by moderators was a guide showing others how to identify and kill players from Venezuela. It should be noted, perhaps unsurprisingly, more than a couple posts below this were filled with racist and other anti-Venezuelan comments, including this post on the subreddit from when Venezuela's power outages first started, and the top comment below this saying, Jagex needs to do something about these Venezuelans. I don't care about their real-life situation. They play the game solely for monetary gain, and it's ruining the economy. They offer nothing to the game. They do not interact within the community. In reality, many Venezuelans who play RuneScape have multiple accounts, usually a few for farming gold and making an income, but also one for their own enjoyment, and many of them like to play the game on their own free time. The man who made the Reddit post telling players how to identify and kill Venezuelans in the game, who coincidentally also didn't want to identify himself, imagine that, said that he meant it only as a dark joke, and was surprised how quickly the thread was filled with racist comments. And even a major clan in the game, Reign of Terror, which to be fair, doesn't have the best reputation with the RuneScape community, has a well-known stance against Venezuelan gold farmers. They'll often send groups of their members into areas such as Rev Caves and gang up on anyone farming in the area. And this has led to some truly wild shit. Whole protection agencies have been formed for players trying to farm Revenant Caves. Essentially, you pay gold to these groups and they make sure nobody else comes in and tries to kill you while you farm. And we merchants have found you really should have some round-the-clock security here. Isn't that what the police are for? They do their best, but they got their hands full. Your weekly dues to us will give you all the supplemental safety net you'll ever need. And there's also a major meme in the community for the Battle of Revenue Caves. One day, a large group of Venezuelan players came in and wiped out all of the Reign of Terror players inside, allowing themselves to farm gold in peace. But for as much awful behavior that Venezuelan players face, there is some good stories as well. The second, unnamed Venezuelan player I mentioned says that he has now met a kind stranger who donated $1,000 to his Bitcoin account to help him buy food for his whole community, and has since made this a monthly donation. And there's another player from the Netherlands who, after noticing an influx of Spanish-speaking players on his server, reached out to them. Quote, I basically try to help Venezuelan players because they deserve better in their real life. I offer them help and do giveaways because I have enough money. It helps them so much. And it should be noted, on the whole, the RuneScape community is actually known for being rather kind and helpful to newer players, especially when compared to a lot of other gaming communities. I'm looking at you, Valorant, a game so toxic the people who worked on the game have admitted to being harassed while playing it. But for now, many Venezuelans still live in a reality where they have to turn to playing RuneScape just in order to survive. 
To quote Martinez one more time, I personally get unnecessary vitriol from other players, but they don't recognize that I don't choose to live my life like this. Hopefully, one day soon, we can all move on from this and enjoy the game as it's meant to be. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing to our channel and maybe heading over to our Discord, where we enjoy talking about interesting stories in gaming just like this one. And maybe check out our Twitch, where we do a weekly gaming news talk show all about the current news in gaming. But either way, thank you once again for watching, and until next time, have a wonderful day.